In this lesson, we will talk about lower triangular matrix. Let's see what we are going to discuss about lower triangular matrix. We'll talk about definition and we'll see how we can convert a matrix to lower triangular matrix using row elementary transformation. In the previous lesson, we had talked about upper triangular matrix. So let's see the definition of lower triangular matrix. Uh, the first thing is it should be a square matrix. That means a matrix with same number of row and same number of columns. For example, a three cross three matrix, a four cross four matrix. So it has to be a square matrix and all elements above diagonal must be zero. So let's see with an example. So if I write this uh, matrix with the elements 1, 0, 0, 2, 3, 0, 4, 5 and 6. In this matrix we can see the first thing is it's a square matrix because it's a 3 cross 3 matrix. And we have this is the diagonal of the matrix and we can see all the elements above the diagonal are zero. So this is the example of the lower triangular matrix. Now let's see how we can convert a matrix to lower triangular matrix using row elementary transformation. Before I start converting, let me tell you three rules, three tips or three suggestions that I have already told you into the upper triangular matrix. In the same way, we have three rules. What are the rules? Rule number one or we can say tip number one. We'll always start from the last column and we'll move to the first column. That means we'll convert all the elements of the last column first to zero, all the required elements. That means we'll convert this uh, two, this three in the last column first to zero. Then we'll come to second column and then we'll convert this element to zero. So this is the rule number one. We'll move from the last column and we'll convert all the elements of the last column to zero, which are the required elements. And then we'll move to the second column and then if required, then in the first column. So this is the rule number one. Rule number two, just opposite to the upper triangular, that we need to move from the bottom to top. Let's say if you are converting all elements of column three to zero, then we'll start from bottom to top. That means, first of all, we'll convert the row number two to zero, and then we'll convert the element in row number one to zero. So we are moving from bottom to top. This is the rule number two. Uh, rule number three that is similar that we have studied in the upper triangular matrix that if you want to convert an element let's say if you want to convert the element uh, here is two that is in the column number three then this has to be operated with row number three let's say if you want to convert this element to zero then this is in column number three so it has to be operated with row number three Let's say if we want to convert this element to zero as this is in column number two. So the operation will be with row number two. So these are the three rules that we have to follow. So let's back it. So according to the rules, we want to convert the elements of this column first. And uh, in this column, again, following the rule number two, we'll start from the uh, bottom to top. So we'll convert this element first to zero and has to be operated with row number three as it is in the column number three. So what will be the operation? The operation will be row two will be converted by row two minus twice of row three. This will be the operation. So uh, row number one will remain same. This is two, one, three. Row number three will remain same. Three, two, one. <coughs> And we'll convert this row number two. So we'll multiply. We are multiplying here uh, by two. So this is three to the six. Seven minus six will give you one. Two to the four. Five minus four will give us a one. And this is two. Two minus two. This will be a zero. So this is the first step. Now according to the rule, we need to convert all the elements in this column only. And we'll move from bottom to top. So next element we need to convert is three and again as it is in column number three we'll operate this with the row number three so the next operation will be row one will be converted by row one minus thrice of row three so we need to multiply this with three and then uh, we'll subtract three r three and r one so we'll subtract three r three from r one so this will be converted row number two will be same 
this is row number three will be same three two and when the changes will be in row number one so this will be multiplied with the uh, three 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 is a nine so two minus nine this will be minus of seven so this is three to the six one minus six will be minus of five and this is a uh, three minus three that is zero so you can see we have uh, converted all the necessary elements in column number one to zero now we need to move to the next column that is column number two so uh, let me do in column number two in column number two we need to convert only one element to zero and that element is this right so we need to convert this minus five to zero this is in which column this is in column number two so we need to operate this with row number two so we can multiply by five and then we can add this row into row number one so the operation will be row number one will be converted to row number one plus five row number two so now let's perform uh, this row number two and row number three will remain same this is one one and zero and this will be three two and one so we need to perform the operations in row number uh, two so this is a uh, minus seven into five so this is minus seven plus five that is minus of two next is minus of five into five that will uh, plus five this is plus five so this will be zero and the last element will not have any effect because these two both are zero that is why that is uh, that is the importance of performing all the operations according to the three rules three set of rules so that uh, this zero will not be converted back into any other element so this is how we can convert any uh, matrix into the lower triangular matrix i hope you have understood this concept that's it for the today's lecture. We we'll meet in the next lecture with some more uh, problems and some more definitions into the matrices. Thank you so much.